So as you've probably heard by now, Apple just announced their brand new Vision Pro reality headset and it comes at an insane $3,500 and releases early next year. But looking at the product as a whole, I really think that it does have uh, the characteristics of a revolutionary industry changing product and something we haven't really seen in a while. Now, obviously a lot of things factor into this, but just looking at it as a whole, not the concept of AR VR, but more how they've integrated that into the entire uh, device, I really do think it's pretty revolutionary. But before we get into the entire concept of this device, let's look at it from more of an objective viewpoint. So Apple has claimed that they're taking everything from the iPhone, iPad, and Mac OS and just making it three-dimensional or at least interpretable by humans in the 3D space. So whether that means screens or, you know, interactable objects, whatever it is, all these apps that you've had on Mac devices or sorry, Apple devices for years, uh, they're going to be now available on this three-dimensional space. And that is called Vision OS. So it kind of keeps with their theme of OS type devices, iPad OS, iOS, Mac OS, and now Vision OS. And from what we saw in the keynote, uh, a lot of these apps interacting with one another and the human interacting with the app, it seems really fluid and fluent, a lot like well, modern smartphones. So that is something that really stood out. And uh, well, overall speaking of the entire user interface, uh, one of the coolest things I saw was the environments feature where you can actually just kind of immerse yourself in an entire VR experience. You're basically erasing the room that you're in or the place that you're in and uh, you keep the AR components which is you know the screen or the uh, interactive interactable uh, applications. So I, I mean, a lot of what we're seeing here is uh, kind of mixed reality, not just AR, but also VR. And uh, well, I think the biggest part of all of this is how do you actually interact with it? So it's actually just your hands and your eyes. So everything you're controlling is basically virtual. So basically what's happening here is you're using your hands and your eyes and the tracking in your eyes to basically look and gesture towards what you want. So you can scroll with your hands, uh, you can look towards different directions to point. This is actually really, really cool. Although this might be a bit of an issue for people with accessibility issues or uh, disabilities, we'll have to see how that goes. But. I think this is really groundbreaking stuff. Now, one feature I really liked uh, is called EyeSight. So kind of a, I guess it's kind of a play on words there. Um, it it kind of just makes sure as a whole, people around you and you are aware of each other, kind of aware of your surroundings. And so with all this being said, uh, at least if this device is what it promises to be, I think it's pretty safe to say this device, uh, the Vision Pro, will achieve a decent or good amount of sales figures. But the question is, what really is the appeal here for Apple? I mean, we saw the MetaQuest Pro from Facebook or Meta last year. Uh, so, so many of these companies are investing a large amount of resources, allocating these resources into this device. I mean, there are tons and tons of features that I'll get into in a bit uh, with this device, with the Vision Pro. And so it's safe to say they've put a lot of effort into this. So the big question here is, what's the big appeal for these companies? Why have two major tech companies now decided to shift a bunch of their resources to this new AR VR future? Uh, I think for me, it's pretty straightforward. It's two points. One is the ability to monetize literally anything within this new medium. Uh, and that kind of shifts over to the second point, which is, if they believe this future where everybody is just walking around with something like this in an ever mobilizing world, then if you have a monopoly, you're likely to be the main go-to choices for this product. Uh, similar to how the iPhone was the first kind of major smartphone, not the first smartphone, but one of the first major ones. And speaking more to the second point, what is the appeal for average users, for users like me and you? Um, well, for one, it is, appealing because of how easy it is to actually use. I mean, for one, this product may not be as easy as something like glasses, but it's probably very easy for them to transition the hardware into something like prescription glasses, to which point you don't even need to pick out your phone from your pocket. Now, I don't think this should be done. I think it's a bit too much to immerse yourself 
24 hours a day in a technology that is controlled by a privatized company. But again, people who want convenience, who want uh, the ability to control everything in their lives. Uh, I mean, most people nowadays control everything in, with their lives, uh, at least work and, and, and uh, you know, housing and, and most things in their lives, like ordering groceries. They actually control it with their smartphone. So why wouldn't you want the ability to control everything in your life much easier? I mean, it's pretty much a no-brainer for some people. They just don't really care about the fact that this could be potentially dangerous. Immersing yourself not only in a potentially false reality, but also giving that control for this false reality to a privatized company. But that being said, um, I do have faith in Apple. Uh, they did say that you know the ability to control your iris, where your iris looks, will not be given to anybody, including Apple. They don't store that data. They don't really use that data. I mean, I think it's stored privately, so it's encrypted. Uh, they just don't use the data for anything. Um, but that does not mean they can just advertise based on what you watch or what you do. Um, it's definitely there and they can probably do it. Um, over a billion people use the iPhone and even more if you count Macs and iPads. And if you want people to switch from a really comfortable medium like that over to something that is mostly unfamiliar to most people, which is augmented reality, you're gonna want a bunch of things, at least a couple of things that are really consistent or even better when they switch or convincing them to switch. So one, at least, I have two actually, but one major one for me would be ease of use. I mean, this huge headset, yeah, they talked all about the comfort of it, how it's designed around the human head, but I just don't see it happening. Like people walking day to day completely normally with that huge kind of headset, glasses looking thing on a head. Um, I just don't see it happening, but I do think when they make it, obviously they're gonna make it smaller and, and more Portable. And when they do do that, I think that'll be that box checked, ease of use. The second thing is the bigger one, I think. It's mobile content to AR, augmented reality, transfer. So when you want to transfer this to this kind of mixed reality, but mostly AR world, you really do want to see uh, the products that you use, the consumers like social media stuff, all available here, at least in the same form or even better. I mean, if some of these apps can be better, why would people want to stay on their phone or their Mac? They would want to transfer, right? So that's probably one of the biggest things. And uh, yeah, we did see a bit of that in the keynote. So at the keynote, we saw a lot of the Apple apps like FaceTime really being fluent with, uh, with the entire UI. I mean, people are interacting with it. It looks great in the real world, uh, but that is Apple's proprietary apps and those usually should be the best because they designed it around the entire device in Vision OS. But one thing I definitely did see was Disney's partnership uh, with them and how their watching experience for sports and movies is really immersive. Like you can go courtside to an NBA game, uh, a lot of other stuff like that, uh, definitely really cool. But we also need to see third party apps that are not partnered with them, uh, maybe Meta, because I mean, they definitely have their um, connections maybe they have developer uh, opportunities for since they already have the metaverse but how do meta's apps like instagram integrate well with uh, the entire uh, headset and also just regular apps that aren't as popular but are used by a lot of people um, for example notion i mean it's pretty popular but it's not mainstream like something like whatsapp right now a bit more on the features um, obviously we saw the fluidity with safari and messages i really like the ui setup it's uh, kind of like a curve uh, area over the entire um, reality that it's being displayed on. Um, my favorite part definitely has to be the entire movie watching experience. Now that is really, really cool. So basically you can go anywhere in their selected uh, environments, as they call it. Um, you, you can go anywhere and display anything there. So you can use that for the theater experience where you can either go to a theater or go to anywhere and display a huge screen and sit anywhere in this virtual theater. Um, 
I think it's really cool because from what it seems, especially with this advanced technology in this headset um, and all this like spatial tracking things, uh, it looks really, really cool. And uh, I would definitely wanna try it out. But the best part is it also comes with spatial audio. So that gives you that kind of immersive theater watching experience. And speaking of some of the other features uh, and details, I think one of the major selling points on day one uh, for this device is going to be the uh, kind of virtual working experience. So we kind of saw this in the keynote, but it's kind of having the ability to do anything like whiteboarding or hearing uh, different people in the meeting from different sides, kind of the entire experience being uh, less virtualized um, I think it's going to be a huge selling point and probably the thing that most people get it for on day one. I can see corporations buying this in mass for a lot of their top people who work uh, more remotely from different parts of the world. Um, it just seems really cool and for me, I just don't like the virtual working experience that much. Um, and I, I think a lot of people agree with me. So that would definitely be something that uh, really sells people on this, at least I think it might get a lot of bulk orders for that specific reason. Um, and I, I think it was it was really cool. And so that's pretty much it for Vision Pro, their reality headset. Definitely gotta try it sometime to kind of test these theories or I don't know, watch videos. I, I gotta see this in person. It's uh, it's really revolutionary. I think it can replace the iPhone, but that's, that's just my belief. Um, so uh, what other stuff came out at WWDC. So uh, it was a great event, I think. 15-inch um, MacBook Air finally bringing that huge screen size to a portable factor, 3.3 pounds, I think. Um, it also had the uh, uh, M2 Ultra. So basically there was no need for them to upgrade the chip anymore, but just to solidify themselves as the premium Ultra chip manufacturer of all time, um, they created the M2 Ultra and they put that in Mac Studio and the Mac Pro, which is finally updated after forever. iOS 17 also got um, uh, post personalized posters for like call screens and, and sharing. And speaking of sharing, there's now Name Drop, which is like a contact version of AirDrop. Not the best name, but I, I think it's cool. And uh, yeah, I, a couple of changes to macOS. They got macOS Sonoma. I think it's a great name. There's a new live voicemail feature. I thought that was cool, um, where you can kind of like pick up the phone if the voicemail is someone that you want to pick up or just let them finish the voicemail. One more thing about the uh, the uh, device, the uh, uh, Vision Pro. No one is wearing this on an, on an airplane. I, I just want to make that clear. I saw that in the keynote like two times or something. Are they trying to make this a thing I don't know. In the future, yeah, definitely, when it's more portable, when it's more like glasses. But no one is wearing this on a plane, especially with that wire thing hanging out the back. I'll, I'll try to get this reviewed when it comes out next year, but I don't know, depends. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.